Welcome to a very special edition of Desert Island Discs. Now, usually I have just one guest and their choice of eight tracks as they contemplate life alone on our imaginary island. Last month, with isolation now a reality for millions of us in our own homes, we invited you to let us know the music you have turned to during these long weeks of lockdown. Many, many hundreds of you shared your choices and your stories Our inbox was filled daily with messages from hospitals and care homes, from key workers on the front line and grandparents marooned at home, from the heart of our biggest cities and from rural communities around the country. Many of you told us that you now heard the world in a new way. With fewer planes in the sky and less traffic on the roads, the sounds of nature proliferated. And all of you told us about the music you've turned to, for comfort, for consolation, to bring you closer to loved ones, to cheer you up and, of course, and importantly, to dance. And it's these stories and the power of music in our lives at the moment that we'll be hearing about in the next hour. We'll begin in a London hospital. Although lockdown restrictions are now easing, when they began on March 23rd, the message was stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. Right across the UK, hospitals were already treating patients with COVID-19. It was a period of massive change for everyone involved, increasing ICU capacity and critical care beds, retraining staff to work with ventilators, dealing with a shortage of PPE and learning new ways of treating the virus every day as knowledge increased. It was in this situation that our first listener, Jane Moss, was working. I work at the Royal Free Hospital in London. It's a big teaching hospital in the north of London. I am the head of quality governance. And so it's kind of patient safety that I look after. And I've been there for about 22 years. So it's basically like a second home for me. I think pretty much everybody in the organisation has had to transform the way that they're working. You know, the courage, I think, and the bravery that our staff have shown, I mean, awful for our families who've not been able to be with their loved ones at some of the most difficult times. And so the organisation responding to that by getting the technology in so that we can facilitate FaceTime calls between families. It's just been phenomenal just to keep those patients with their families connected at every possible moment. And I think our staff have probably found that really, really difficult. And then on the other hand, where you are with somebody in their last moments to feel a sense of honour that you are there on, on behalf of the family and that you're going to be with their loved one and make sure that they're they're not alone during their last moments. So, you know, the emotional toil is really up there for everybody. Our matrons and our senior nurses, they meet every single week. They meet with our director of nursing for the hospital. And one week, my director of nursing, Rebecca, asked if I would bring my guitar along just to have a bit of a sing song because she thought it might be a nice way to maybe release some stress. And it was probably at the height of the pandemic at that point. So the way the meetings go, we do lots of things on an agenda and talk about lots of issues. And then the last sort of five, ten minutes was dedicated to singing a song and actually people really seem to enjoy it you know they were leaving the meeting to go back up to the wards with a bit of a smile on their face and there was a nice energy that kind of followed them and then one week my director of nursing Rebecca asked me if I could play Amazing Grace and I was like oh I don't know I'm not not really sure about that so I, I had a look at it and at first I was thinking oh it's kind of quite a somber piece but It was actually very easy to play and I realised what a beautiful song it is. We did one song first for a bit of a warm up and then we started to sing Amazing Grace. It was something, uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure what it was, but it was like people really connected with that song. I 
think ultimately that song is around you know a transformation and a different way of thinking and striving to do the right thing and the best thing. I can't really explain what happened, but people really connected to it and they sung it absolutely beautifully. We had some harmonies going. I mean, we are, we're not a group of singers. I don't know, something very powerful happened and um, people really, really did connect to it. It's a song about healing as well. And I just know that afterwards, after we kind of sang the song and it was finished, everyone was looking at each other as if to say, did we just do that? <laughs> The version of Amazing Grace that I really like and is probably one of the ones that I've heard most is the one by Judy Collins. It's an a cappella version and it's absolutely beautiful just with her singing and then you can hear the, the kind of choir coming in underneath her. It's very pure. It's just really nice and simple. You know, you get the sense that actually this really is a, a healing song and it's been around for hundreds of years and uh, it's probably helped a lot of people through some really difficult times. Just beautiful, Judy Collins with her version of the traditional hymn by John Newton. Our thanks to Jane Moss for sharing her choice of music and huge thanks and appreciation to all of her colleagues for allowing us to hear their very personal version of that track too. Suganya Naveenan also wanted to hear Amazing Grace. She told us that she's from a BAME background and wrote of the palpable fear in sections of BAME communities as so many are dying. Her daughter is an a and &E junior doctor and Suganya is trying to shield two elderly disabled relatives. She says, Music has helped me immensely throughout my life in times of difficulties, sadness, as well as joy and times of happiness. Early in the lockdown, I was especially moved by a choir who sang Amazing Grace outside Charing Cross Hospital, London, as so many inside were trying to save lives and care for people. The beautiful sound echoed through the neighbouring streets and I just cried and also felt so uplifted.